So, um, you know, Matt is our, our VP of marketing. He's got a, a lot of experience in software quality, and he's actually been in the trenches himself as well. So, uh, you know, he understands the technology and how it works. So um, we're going to have our little final summation here and have Matt uh, talk to us about generally how to deliver quality software faster. So take it away, Matt. Thank you, Arthur. Um, you're thanks, you're really quiet, Matt. I don't know if you can crank your volume. Uh, good question. Am I, still, am I still quiet? That's better. Okay. Okay. I'll talk a little louder. Usually, usually, quiet's not the issue. <laughs> it's the opposite. So, hey, I want to just thank everybody as I wrap up uh, today's program with kind of a closing keynote to kind of you know kind of tie up some loose ends. But I just want to thank everybody that's attended. I want to thank everybody that has spoken, uh, that has been part of a panel discussion. Uh, there's a ton of people behind the scenes, but uh, but I just really, really appreciate everybody's attention. Hopefully, this has been extremely useful, and hopefully this last session will kind of bring things together. And then, of course, we get to show off our technology as well. I hope you stick, can stick around for that because we can actually show you right the products in action uh, if that's of interest um, that, again, many of our speakers actually spoke about in some way, shape, or form. So with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of, again, wrapping up with, with delivering quality software faster. Uh, this whole, this whole you know, summit has really been about continuous quality. And so I just want to kind of talk a little bit about that in more detail. So um, if we were to ask you, maybe somebody in the audience here or uh, a VP of development or maybe uh, a director or manager, um, what is your top priority for software development and delivery, right? Um, you're gonna get some different answers. And it's really interesting uh, how people answer. And then it's more interesting maybe to figure out, okay, do their actions actually match their words as a company, as an organization? Um, and I think that's where you see you know some interesting um you know maybe differences and uh and so so but here's what's interesting i had a conversation recently with um a professional who has worked as a consultant across many large-scale enterprises and and it didn't take him long to say speed right so so speed is the most important thing and all these other things we pay lip service to to some degree but speed really is the most important thing and, and i think there are times in our life when this is definitely true right uh this is an this is an instance hopefully <laughs> speed is very important at this point um and so if each of these people you know just kind of carry on this uh this this, this humor if each of these people represented a, a development team you know this guy this guy he's surely thinking why didn't i invest more in my you know automating my ci cd pipeline uh my devops tool chain um well this guy hey he attended last year's summit and took it took it took it to the bank and said hey i knew this 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 uh, investment in automated testing would pay off so um all right so but but in a more serious note we're all in this if we're in the software development world we're in this sort of modern development tug of war right so in this tug of war in this 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 interesting little diagram here i thought you might you know people are kind of engineers here this was came came from uh, some sort of probably a physics textbook. Um, we've got team one, team two, and th team three, and there and it's a three-way tug of war. And team one is speed, right? So so this is this is like is this most important? There's this tension going on. Team two is about is complexity. I'm adding a new a new entrant here. Complexity. Uh, every one of our speakers has actually talked about this, whether they called it out as actually complexity. Um, they've all touched on this theme that we're dealing with very complex systems and interdependencies. Uh, microservices uh, doesn't help things. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, team three is quality. And actually, as you start thinking about, you know, speed and quality, speed and complexity, complexity and quality, each one, there's a tension, right? There's a tension between what we want to deliver, how fast we want to deliver, um, and, and, then, and then what, you know, what level of quality. And when I say quality here, you can think of this as, as, as security, compliance, um, as maybe being, you know, kind of wrapped into that. So, so what's the solution, right? So, you know, the need need for speed is is a given. That reminds me, uh, you know, of of, of, uh, of course this dates me, uh, but Top Gun, right? Uh, 
you know, I feel the need for speed. So, but that's just that's just a given, right? So we can't that can't go away, right? Digital transformation as people are pulled more and more and more is about speed. Complexity is not going to go away, right? With with cloud with um, you know, all of the different technologies we have in terms of microservices and different systems being interdependent, that interdependency isn't going away, that complexity isn't going away. Um, and so you know, what are we left with? We're left with if, if that third you know, area is quality, we don't wanna sacrifice quality. So how do we make these things all work together? And I think you heard throughout the day that quality tools and practices must a be better integrated to the entire development life cycle as well as into the other tools in the tool chain and and then automated and this is an area that i think for many many organizations is lagging even though cole talked about 89 percent of individuals at the very beginning of the day talked about 89 percent of, of individuals um or, or teams let's say having some automation he also said that only 37 percent or something like that are, are actually getting an roi and so, and so there's long ways to go. So it turns out that if that was, if that's the answer, we're sort of in good company because Cor um, Forrester released the Forrester Tech Tide. They've got a bunch of other great resources uh, as well as Gartner, but this Tech Tide is not a Tech Tide on quality or on testing. It is a Tech Tide on continuous software delivery. This is what I find interesting. And the number one key takeaway Testing tools must be a key area for investment to achieve continuous delivery. So if you want to achieve the goal of continuous software delivery, which I would argue 99% of all software organizations in the entire world are on that continuum, either they want to, uh, they've already started, or maybe they're getting more mature um, in how they're doing that. Um, Forrester says, well, guess what? Testing is critical. And not only that, they went into detail in this particular report about six particular distinct areas of testing that are all considered high value. Again, this, this report has a lot more detail, but, but API test automation, talked about that today quite a bit, continuous functional test automation, talked about that, um, service virtualization and testing, shift left performance test automation, we didn't talk as much about that, but those are all areas that they say invest, meaning most organizations um, have not invested enough and need to invest more. Um, the third or the fifth and sixth year code quality scanning uh, and unit testing, they say maintain, but that may not apply to everybody listening, right? Some of you maybe have underinvested in those areas, but they say they're still high value, continue investing in those areas. And so what's really interesting is looking at this report, right? Um, and this is where I put my marketing hat on. Um, it, it just, just for a moment. Um, <laughs> is that Parasoft's the only vendor listed in all of those six testing categories in that report from Forrester, right? They list a lot of other vendors um, across different dimensions of, of areas to invest in. And they're not all, again, this report's not all about testing. It's about there's other things to invest in, like value stream management, et cetera. Um, and and so, so, so we're the only, the only vendor that was listed in all six categories. I find that interesting. Um, and uh, and again, I'm not I'm not even going to go into detail here because what's cool is you get to see a demo of many of these tools in action um, after I'm done. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I I'm putting this slide in as well because I know most of today's presentations uh, or most of the presentations today in the summit were from our customers or third parties, and they didn't really talk much about Parasoft in any detail. But you know. What I take pride in, I've been here about a little over a year, um, joined a fantastic company with a fantastic heritage of helping our customers succeed. Um, that's that's what I think is the coolest thing about this is that we've been around for quite a while and we continue to raise the bar um, and have and it took it took some fantastic um, technology and thinking and some patents and so forth to sort of achieve um you know the capabilities that we have today and uh and so anyway if you're not a, not a customer maybe you'll check it out um so with that i am going to pull in igor kirilenko who is our chief product officer and, and we're going to have we're going to have a little chat with him i'm going to ask him a couple of questions so let me um i think while i'm still on camera igor are you there. Should be able to see me, right? Okay, cool. 
All right. So um, thanks, Igor, for joining us. So uh, yeah, cool. I appreciate that. So quick, quick intro to the first question. So the intro is this quote. Charity Majors is CTO of Honeycomb. She was interviewed by Woj Tech, uh, and I probably pronounced that very badly, uh, Borowitz and Wojtek. There you go. Um, and here's, and I think this is a really interesting quote. So, so it, it, it's mind boggling to sit back and actually think about how complex these systems are. What amazes me is not that things fail, but that more or less things work. Um, I think you saw that in a lot of the, uh, today's today's yeah. right talks. Um, and then she goes on to say, you have tens, dozens, hundreds of far flung services. And that is, she's pointing at that specifically, that's making it exponentially harder to diagnose problems. But I would suggest it makes it harder to test systems. It makes it harder to, to you know, write systems, keep them, keep them running, maintain them, et cetera, um, as well as obviously find the defects as you're testing. Um, and so with that as the backdrop, Oops, sorry, don't wanna to go to that. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute. And I am going to, we'll just turn our cameras on. And in fact, I'm gonna put my, the question using this nifty technology here, I'm gonna put it in the background. So uh, my question is, right, how does Parasoft help customers manage the complexity, right, of testing with hundreds of far-flung services? That's actually great observations in terms of complexity. We know that service-oriented um, technology and architecture gives a lot of value uh, to make our system run in productions uh, in the most stable way. They give us ability to upgrade those components independently. Loose coupled architecture, it's essential of um, to prevent uh, failed stations, uh, support failed fail tolerance, and other things. But as we saw it today uh, through presentations uh, mentioned by Jason from RVC or Roya from Cox Automa Automotive, it brings a lot of complexity. And there, all the customers have to deal with that. Uh, the essential part of the job on QA side is to validate that each of the components actually can fully functional based on the requirements and specifications. So the question is how you would achieve that goal to validate that those components can work together and each of them actually fully functional. We truly believe that in this complex world of interdependency and external dependencies that, for example, service visualization technology can be key for that uh, to provide the true solutions of the problem because now you can isolate your external services and simulate difficult behaviors of those systems, it's from one perspective gives you 24 seven access to those systems. So you less depends on their availability, but at the same time, you can simulate very sophisticated use cases or like negative test scenarios right now, because you can control how those systems will behave and in which state you'll position them. So I, I believe this is very powerful technology. And again, based on today's examples, um, it's proved that it helps to solve real problems on the customer side in this complex world. Uh, service virtualization itself is very powerful, but as we're saying that a lot of those applications exposing their interfaces, maybe through mobile devices, maybe through REST API, through web UI, and Developers and testers have to deal with many different tools if they kind of want to test all those different input points. As we're talking about, and especially when we talk about automation, they need to kind of master those tools. That's where we believe that so test as omni-channel test tools can help a lot because it encapsulates all those different practices and gives the ability to build this all your different test scenarios and in combination with visualizations, it really provides this container for your application under the test from both sides and gives you full control of your test environment. And on top of that, that you can reuse those test scenarios from cell tests because now you can reuse them to run inside the load test and now you can create stress tests on, on top of your applications. You can monitor the behavior, how it will work when you scale to 
100,000 users. And with the latest release of our product, we introduce penetration testing, more, more coupled inside the whole test. So now you can ship left, not only a traditional functional testing, but actually security testing by using our pen test uh, integrations with open source frameworks. Okay, okay. That's very good. Um, and uh, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think, again, I think what this does is this just kind of reinforces uh, some of, of what we've heard today from a lot of our customers uh, and other speakers. Um, so with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to the next, next area. Um, so what I'd like to do is talk, introduce the next topic, which is, which is AI, right? AI and, uh, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so, um, and so, you know, this is, there's lots of different quotes I could have taken, but this, this quote from Gartner, I found sort of interesting. So not all artificial intelligence and machine learning strategies are created equal, but they are becoming critical for differentiation and sometimes survival. And, uh, and in fact, uh, there's a, this is a pretty good resource from Gartner. They have these, what they call prisms, use case, AI use case prisms, and they have a lot of them. They have, I think, I don't know, 20 of them or more uh, across all sorts of different technology areas. But you can see the one I have blurred. No, your vision isn't going bad. I've purposely blurred it because I don't have, we don't, we don't have this license per se. So um, to show you all the detail, we, you, you need to go to, to Gartner. Uh, for that, but they have one for software development and testing, and it, it's primarily around testing technologies. And they're, they're, in this case, that prism uh, has 21 areas that AI could be applied. Um, and so my question, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing that screen again, and I'm gonna go from a video perspective here um, to question number two. So my question to you, Igor, is um, how has Parasoft leveraged, how do we leverage, I guess, and how have we leveraged AI and, and ML across our products to sort of improve the overall testing experience, to make it better, make it faster, uh, more efficient, et cetera? I'm pretty sure tomorrow it will be more than 21. Um, and AI technology actually um, deliver on their promises, right? It's here to stay and solves really complicated, difficult problems. And many of them are in testing areas to help in development and QA organizations to achieve their quality goals. So we as Parasoft been driven uh, by innovations, obviously invest a lot into this technology as well. And I guess the best way to show uh, what, we did, what we did and what kind of problems we're solving for our customers is kind of reference to test pyramid because it describes all those layers of different activities for, from testing perspective. And talking about those problems, it's if you start looking at the bottom of the pyramid and static test, static code analysis, we know the customers uh, struggling with uh, thousands of violations when they turn on their static code analysis, assuming they didn't start to use it from the very beginning, but let's say they already have advanced systems, and now they need to certify with some particular code standards. They turn it on and they overwhelmed with those many, many different violations where they would start. And many of them actually could be perceived even as, as false positive, even though it doesn't mean that that's wrong. It's just customers care less about them, so they want to suppress. So we do have the technology which allows us to help the customers to deal with those false positives and help them to focus on the solutions which they need. And we developed um, hotspot analysis. We have classification techniques using different AI classifications algorithms to basically focus them on the violations that they need to fix first and worry less about those which can be perceived as false positives. Moving up to unit testing, um, that's another challenge for many customers, especially who is dealing with legacy applications, how they can increase code coverage, how they create that safe net around their application. So when they start making changes to, to the code, they will not break existing behavior. And here we have sophisticated technology embedded inside our J test and C++ test products, which actually do deep analysis of the sources, create a full model for presentations and in combinations with our flow analysis engines, it can discover all different paths of execution through all single lines of the code. We resolve um, 
variables, conditions, switch statements, and we can generate sophisticated unit tails. And I want to emphasize on the fact that, as it was mentioned in the previous conversation with Danny, not it doesn't have to be thousand of unit tests. We try to optimize coverage versus the number of tests, minimize the number of tests, given the highest coverage. Uh, and that's very useful for those legacy system. Or if customers want to target specific area of the code to reach specific um, line of the code, unit test technology can help them as well. So that's how we solve those particular problems. We always emphasize that API testing, and again, it was mentioned multiple times during these conversations, that API testing needs to be done first before you move to UI. Because API testing, it's more reliable, it's much faster, and it gives you better control of your application of your backend systems before you even move to the next level of execution. Before you want to be sure that UI works well, you need to be sure that your service is actually fully functional. But it's easy to say, hey, build more API tests. How you can actually achieve that? How you do that? Especially for those customers who used to test through UI, UI already encapsulates all the business logic underneath, and it knows how to orchestrate those REST services, call them together to achieve the goal. But if I'm the tester, I need to start writing my own test against REST API, I might not know exactly how they need to be tied together. I can read the documentations which describe me parameter against each individual call I will do, but how to build business logic. So here's we have smart API test generation technology, which allowed the users through manual execution of those tests, or maybe running them in automated fashion, if they already have automated tests, we will capture all the traffic which come in from the browser to, for example, your backend systems. And the technology itself will create the model of all the communication coming back and forth, will understand how those parameters correlated with each other between multiple different calls, and then in the automated fashion, we'll generate all those tests for you. Be sure that we're not using any hard-coded values, for example, and you can continuously re-execute the test, and if server will start to return different parameters, which need to be passed through the business logic to other method calls, we, through parameterizations, we will guarantee that that's what's happening. So these techniques really give the opportunity and specific path through creation of the test for our customers. And of course, on top of that, they can extend it and add more tests if they want to increase the coverage. So this baseline gives them opportunity to move to the next one, the UI testing, right? And that's where we know that everybody has challenges with UI testing in terms of stability, how to run those tests in predictable manner, because they're very sensitive to changes of UI. Development teams constantly making changes, give you new versions, new products. And very often the UI test is very sensitive to performance of the machines as well. Uh, we know the times out conditions and so on. So self-healing technology becomes very critical uh, for our customers to be successful because you don't want to come in the morning to actually check the result of your overnight test executions just to discover that somewhere at the very beginning uh, UI was broken and your entire sequence of tests was kind of failed right now and you don't know the status of your quality of your applications. So self-healing technology, which we built as part of our Swanic products, allows to execute your, whether you existed already Selenium test, you don't need to switch technology and you need to do anything else. You just seamlessly plug in our Selenium engine, which will start observations pattern kind of during runtime executions. And if you detect the failure, it will look through the history of your previous successful test executions, detect the changes on site UI, and will attempt to self heal, try to correlation of the items, figure it out where they've been moved around, and basically will still re-execute your test and enable you to continuously run them to the very end. Um, it's not only about UI changes, as I said, it uh, can fix your time conditions as well. And even more to that, it will send you recommendations back to you as the developers, telling you specifically which line of your test need to be fixed and how it can be fixed. So your test will become kind of stable again and will run in the future in the way how it were intended. 
So self-healing is very critical technology and we have solution for this as well. And to the next topic, it's like how you optimize your test executions right now. We're talking about efficiency of TA job. And again, it was mentioned by uh, Justin Trainer and by Danny as well. I mean, when you have 100,000 of your tests or you need to perform your manual test executions, wouldn't that be better if you'll just run those on those tests which are associated with changes inside the code base? So we do have technology which what we call test impact analysis, smart test executions, which analyzes the different binaries. And if you need to test new build, it will know what was changed inside the code. And if you transfer it, map it back to the test and sub create subset of tests which need to be rerun, or will suggest to manual tester which tests need to be rerun to be sure that all those changes will be verified, validated, but you don't need to rerun everything. This technology can work with unit test executions, can work with API, UI, and as I mentioned with um, manual test execution as well. And it enables our developers right now to basically run them on desktop even before you do code commit, because it's a big problem. It's not only optimizations of your UI pipeline test executions, but actually how you can rerun those tests on every single change you perform as a developer on your desktop before you'll make a commit to the source repository without breaking the build. So you want to have several, some level of confidence that your changes are actually validated. And this technology would give you that ability to do it in a very fast way. Unfortunately, I cannot okay. go to more details yeah. <laughs> this time, well, but we do have a lot of material, yeah. Yeah, so I think the key is, right, um, just to kind of summarize again, we, we've spent a lot of time obviously thinking about this for, for years in terms of how AI can, can, you know, really improve your testing experience, uh, people that use our tools, each particular area of testing. And we've talked about this again, kind of from an end to end perspective, um, from shift left to, you know, from, from the standpoint of, um, you know, static code analysis and unit testing and code coverage all the way through in each area, there's some really specific, unique challenges to automating, right? Testing in those particular areas, and I think, you know, we again, we have some some really cool technology that 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 uh, helps our customers become more efficient, improve experience, um, be smarter about their testing, um, and so forth. So I think I think at that point, at this point, um, thank you so much, Igor. Um, Arthur, that's that's what I had to present. And again, I thank everybody for coming. Thanks, Arthur, for hosting. And uh, we have one more really cool session, which.